plants need to come out of the glass house that we're presently standing in just to allow for structural maintenance to be performed on the glass houses and this will allow for the longevity of the glass houses. Within this glass house there were about 116 species. We are removing all of them and taking them away to different uh, growing environments and the whole project has been given about 18 months. So end of spring 2023 this should be emptied and ready for renovations. Often these larger specimens won't be seen in the wild and so the fact that we have them in our collection and have had them in our collection for such a long time really gives us a responsibility to maintain them. Some are inherently rare. We have the Thersopterus. These are from Juan Fernandez Islands. They occur in extremely, extremely limited natural habitat range. Um, we also have Sibosium shedii, which is at the top of the house. These are extremely rare plants that just are rarely seen in cultivation and are worth conserving so that members of the public who would probably never see them will be able to experience them. Any species that we haven't been able to keep um, going in here, we've collected spores and actually started growing the next generation already, so we'll be in sure supply when it actually comes back to planting them back up again. Some of the larger species we've taken down to our temperate lands, uh, which is a large glass house with an extremely high roof. Smaller understory ferns have been moved to a different decant glass house. Some have been taken down to Logan and some are being given to various other gardens. So yeah, we're sort of rehoming as best as we can and keeping as many as we can. The first steps would be to clear any understory plantings which are growing beneath it. Then we had to remove a lot of large rocks to be able to get in. Once we've had them out of the way, we've been physically reducing the canopy of the tree ferns, so that is to reduce transpiration and therefore reduce stress on the plants by water sort of coming through the plants, leaving. We then relied on a series of cables and winches. We had members of teams from other departments and our ARB team come in with chainsaws. And basically, the whole process was to reduce the amount of stress on the tree ferns and get it lowered down to the ground level, which in itself is a challenge. These are extremely large and in some cases quite heavy. And then once they were down, keep them wrapped up with hessian until they were transported to their new location and planted up straight away. We've received some very historically large tree ferns, which are 150 years old, which were growing indoors in Edinburgh, but have now been transplanted and growing outdoors at Logan. Tree ferns such as Dixonia and Antarctica originate from Tasmania in Australia, and the normal uh, temperatures in uh, Tasmania uh, are warmer than they are in Edinburgh. So if the glass houses uh, were all cleared, etc., they would be killed by normal winter temperatures here in Edinburgh. Whereas at Logan, because we normally get about minus two, minus three, they're perfectly okay outside. It's quite a, an operation to actually take them firstly out of the ground, you know, to move them, pack them onto trailers, cover them over so they don't dry out because it's, uh, I don't know, 150 miles, 200 miles to Logan from Edinburgh. And then on arrival, we tried to plant them as soon as possible. They're settling in very well and actually seeing these plants physically growing outside is a real rarity, not only in Scotland, but also in the UK. Hopefully next spring we'll have newly emerging fronds which the public can enjoy. And so rather than a plant growing in Edinburgh, unfortunately having to die because of a cold winter, we can perpetuate its life. <laughs>